What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness across all social media platforms. This is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice. I'm a diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and also validate the victims, survivors, and thrivers of said disorder, said toxic people, said toxic traits. Today's episode is going to be entitled, How to Hold a Narcissist Accountable. How do you do that? How do you hold a narcissist accountable? I got this question from one of uh, the comment section of one of my videos. I was like, yeah, let me do a video on that. Because we all know, or most of y'all know, if you dealt with a narcissist or toxic person, you know, or you come, to, you should come to the conclude to, to you should come to the conclusion very quickly that narcissistic people, toxic people, do not like to be held accountable for anything that they have done to you or anything that you think that they have done to you. That's just the way it goes, y'all. That I wish I could, I wish I could change it for you. I wish I, there was another way. But narcissists do not like to be held accountable. And so some people are just like because accountability to narcissists is like kryptonite to a Superman. And no, I'm not saying narcissists are Superman, except for me. I'm just joking. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I know. Well, the narcissism just peaked out, Lee. There, you were not kidding right there. You were serious. Blah blah blah. Boo boo boo. Bee, bee, bee. I was kidding. Narcissists are not Superman. Um, but this is the way it goes, though. Nar uh, accountability works like kryptonite to narcissistic people. We don't like it. We try to avoid it at all costs, you know, because it, it strips us. Uh, it strips us. Strips us of our powers. It makes us feel like we are not worthy because accountability leads to us feeling shame or the thought of feeling shame. Shame is so powerful when you're dealing with narcissists and you're dealing with toxic people. It it just is, y'all. It really, really is. So I think this is how my mind works on the subject right here, y'all. The only way, one of the only ways to hold a narcissist accountable is, drum roll, to have some type of leverage on them. The only way to, one of the only ways to hold a narcissist accountable is to have some type of leverage on them. What I mean by le what I mean by leverage is have something that you that they want that they do not want to be taken away. You have to be able to move. You have to have something on them or something that you have to have some type of power over them or control over them to be able to move them, to be able to move, to be able to manipulate the situation. I, I don't mean manipulate in a bad way. It's just like you manipulate a big rock out of the way with a, with a stick in a smaller rock. You know what I mean? You have to have some type of leverage on them to hold them accountable. And a lot of times, narcissists like myself will go out of our way to strip you of any type of leverage that you can have over us. What was what, what, what Lee? Just okay, Lee. We got it. We are we are on the same path right here. But what does leverage look like for us as the person that's dealing with the narcissistic person? Like, what does leverage look like to us? Leverage is anything that you can use to quote unquote harm the narcissistic person. Typically, typically the leverage is access to you. Typically, the leverage is being in a relationship or having access to your life in some way, shape, or form. Because a lot of times, like I said before, narcissists will go out of their way to make sure you don't have any leverage on them, to make sure you can't harm them in any way, to make sure you can't ruin their reputation in any way, They will you, to make sure that they don't, they don't need you for anything. A lot of times, leverage stems from a need. What do they need from you or of you? The leverage that you have over the person is what stems, what is a need. What need did this person have for you in their life? You know what I mean? What's the need right there? What's the dynamic? What 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 are they looking for right there, y'all? I feel like a lot of people have to, you, that's what you have to understand right there. What type of leverage do you have over this person to make them, to make them move? You know what I mean? You have to have some type, you have to have a type of leverage. You have, you have to. There's no in, there's no in, but there's no in between. And typically the leverage is access to you, you leaving them. Well, Lee, what if that doesn't move them? What if we leave and they don't care? You don't have any leverage or they're not, they're not going to let that leverage move them. They'll try to manipulate you in the state. You know what I mean? They'll promise you to change or whatever. You know, access to you is the only leverage that you have a lot of times that you have over that narcissistic person. The only thing that you can take away from them. Leverage is the, something that you can take away from them. You know what I mean? Or something that you provide for them. Something they need you for. You know? If you were to remove this from them or use this against them, 
Could it, quote unquote, harm them in any way? Could it make them feel a certain type of way? What does the leverage look like to you, the person that's dealing with the narcissist? You know what I mean? Tell me, well, why did your wife get you to change? Lee? Why, why, why? Yeah, my wife. Oh, goodness gracious. My wife did not get me to change my behaviors. My wife can knock on this car window right now and be like, hey, baby, I'm leaving you. I'm like, damn, that sucks. You know what? I'm still going to go to therapy next week. I'm still going to go into therapy, y'all, because I know therapy works for me. Therapy helps me. Therapy is for me. Therapy is for me to help me, to assist me on this journey right here. You know, this journey of personal development and self-discovery and things of that nature. Therapy helps me in that way. So I tell, I tell so many people that that's the way, that, that's how you have to deal with it. The way you deal with a narcissistic person is to have some type of leverage. You have to be able to move them off the point. You have to be able to, you have to have something over them to move them. You know what I mean? You have to. You know what I mean? You, something that you have to, something that you can possibly use against them or hold against them or ruin their reputation. You know what I mean? But typically, leverage is access to you. Leverage could be finances. Leverage could be, you know I me, mean, their reputation or your reputation. Leverage, what does leverage look like to you? Leverage is having something that they want or something, you know, or something that they need from you. And sometimes, yeah, the only thing that they need from you is you. If they are in control of all the finances, if they're in control of the household or everything like that, if, if they are in control of everything else, they bring, they make the money, they make the rules, they don't, you, you know what I mean, if they remove you from their life, you see what I'm saying? The only thing, sometimes the only leverage that you have is you cut off access to you. That's the leverage that you have. Hey, look, if you don't, if, hey, look, I'm tired of you lying to me. I'm going to, if you lie to me again, I'm going to leave. And then you have to like, don't just threaten to use that leverage. You have to use it. The threat of the leverage, cool. The threat of you applying and using the leverage, cool. But you have to be willing to use said leverage because if you don't use it, they're just going, if you don't lose it, if you don't use it, they're not going to, you're not going to get any changes from them. And sometimes, most times they're not going to care y'all. Like sometimes if you try to leave them, they're, they're going to pretend like they don't care or they're actually going to try to move on to somebody else. So you don't, you might not ask, actually have the leverage over them. So you have to figure out what does leverage look like to you in this relationship? What does leverage look like to you in this dynamic? What does leverage look like and feel like? What does leverage mean to you? Because the only time you can get, the only time you can move a big ass rock like a narcissist is to apply some type of leverage. You have to have some type of mechanism to get them to move. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes the leverage is whatever it is, but you have to be able to get them to move. You have to figure out what the leverage is. Well, Lee, I can't figure out what the leverage is. Well, then you cannot hold them accountable. Unless you call the police, it's leverage. Hey, I'm going to hold you accountable by calling the police for you hitting, you hitting me. You mean, I'm going to leave you for you hitting me. I'm going to leave you for you threatening me. I'm going to call the police. Sometimes leverage is the police. You mean, sometimes leverage is... Hold, that's the only way you can hold them accountable sometimes, y'all, is to apply leverage. The leverage is access to you a lot of times. You have to have that. And sometimes they won't care. Let's keep it real. Sometimes they will not care, y'all. That's the way, that's the, that's the crux of dealing with narcissism. Sometimes. sometimes you got to realize that they will not care, even if you apply their leverage or you try to use the leverage against them. Well, Lee, I tried it, I tried it, I tried it, and they did not care. They did, they left me anyway. Guess what? It might be It might be for the best. I, I told them if they if they cheated again, they were going to leave, that I was going to leave. Um, I was going to hold them accountable about leaving and taking the kids and filing for divorce or whatever. And you know what? They cheated again, and I found out, and they didn't think I was going to leave. It might be time for you to dip, y'all. Because sometimes you have to, if you don't have any leverage, you know what I mean? You cannot hold them accountable. What is accountability? How do you hold them accountable? Think about it, y'all. You have to think about for yourself because leverage in everybody's situation is going to be different. Like I said, sometimes the leverage is going to be access to you. Most times, that's what the leverage is going to be. Sometimes it's the finances. Sometimes it's the kids. Sometimes sometimes it's the schedule of the kids. There's a lot of different aspects that go along with this right here, y'all. Leverage is different for every single person, but you have to realize what you hold, you know, what you have in this relationship, what you bring in this relationship that they might, that they might need or they might require. Because sometimes they might not need or require anything from you. You know what I mean? And sometimes, like, if you don't have any leverage, then you can't hold them accountable. And once they once they figure, once they think that you don't have any any type of way of holding them accountable, they're going to treat you like crap, y'all. They're going to run. They're going to try to run over top of your ass. I promise you. If they figured it out, they, they, if they get to the point where they feel like, damn, you, there's nothing you have over me that you can use against me, you are, you won't even leave me when I treat you badly. They're going to run you through the goddamn dirt, through the mud, y'all. I promise you. This your life is going to be. You're going to live a rough ass life. 
I promise you. Because if they realize that you can't, if they re once they realize that you can't control them or you don't have any leverage over them, ooh, buckle your goddamn safety. Look, I know I'm sitting in my car right now. Take your seatbelt, wrap it across your shoulder, and then look, buckle it up, and then reach over to the reach over to the other side, reach over to the uh, the passenger side, buckle that seatbelt up too over you. You in for a bumpy ass ride. Cause they're gonna treat you. They're gonna treat you like you know, like something is wrong with you, y'all. I promise you that that it goes a long way. You whatever leverage that you feel like you have over this person, use it, apply it. You have to, y'all. Figure out figure out how what leverage you have in this relationship. Think about it. Like if I remove myself from this relationship, if I remove the finances, if I remove this, could they, could I hold them accountable while removing something? It has to be something that you can remove or use to move them. You see what I'm saying? But anyways, y'all, I'm sitting in this thing on car. I got to go to my office and do a couple of one-on-ones. I still do my one-on-ones over Zoom. I still have the self-love journal available. The self-love brand. I'm actually working on a self-love challenge, y'all. So thank y'all for tuning in to another episode. Like and subscribe for more. And as always, mental illness is out. Peace.